everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. I'm so excited because this is my first official vlog of October. Today is October 4th and my October TBR is just stacked in the best way. I have so many incredible incredible books to read this month. Speaking of incredible books that I will be reading this month, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers find new books that they will love. Their team takes the time every single month to vet hundreds of books and gives readers their choice of a curated selection of new and early release titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Another amazing thing about Book of the Month is they are entirely risk-free. If you aren't really feeling their picks that month, you can skip it anytime, any month, and you will not be charged. However, Book of the Month truly does have something for everyone. They have romances, thrillers, contemporaries, YA fantasies, and oftentimes super highly anticipated releases. Book of the Month also has the best price for new release hardcover fiction. If you use my code TREAT when you sign up this month, you will get your first book for $9.99. So these are my two picks this month. You guys know I am in the biggest fantasy mood right now, so I picked Thistlefoot by Jen of Rose Nethercott. This is actually a Baba Yaga fairy tale retelling. And then I also picked Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This combines magical realism with a murder mystery. I am so hyped. Both of these books sound amazing. I cannot wait to get to them. I will have all of this information linked down below in my description as well as my code. And I just wanted to say thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the vlog. So along with this being just a general weekly reading vlog, I am also participating in a fantastic readathon called Stabathon. This is hosted by Cami at Burrows and Books, Deja at Deja's Book World, Sav at Riveting Reads, Erin at Erin Megan, and Jan at Jan Agaton. My favorite thing about this readathon is that it is a Scream themed readathon, which I absolutely love that movie. So when I saw that that was the theme, I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta participate. And what's fantastic is the prompts of this readathon are pretty versatile, I would say. And so I am able to apply those prompts to my TBR. And so they'll kind of just be guiding me through the week. Now, if you can't tell by the name, Stabathon Stabathon is definitely like a horror readathon, and you guys know. Not, not a horror gal, not really a thriller gal, but I did message Cami when I saw the readathon announcement and I was like, I wanna participate. You know, I really enjoy Scream, but like she knows, she knows me. I'm, I'm a fan of romance girly. And she was like, oh my God, you're fine. Go ahead and read whatever you want. So um, although this is not going to be like a true, true horror Stabathon reading vlog, I am going to participate in the readathon and just put my own little spin on it. So I will list the prompts out for you guys just so you have an idea of what my week will look like. I have picked out three books so far far for this readathon. I would like to add another one, but still haven't decided. So all of the prompts are based off of different characters in Scream, and the first one is Ghostface, and the prompt is read a book with a villain POV. I'm reading All of Us Villains for that prompt, so obviously you can see in the name. Everyone in this book is a villain. Everyone in this book is definitely morally gray and dark, and this fits that prompt perfectly. So this is a YA fantasy, and it's basically like Hunger Games, but with magic, and it's kind of gothic and has these sort of dark autumnal vibes. It's a really, really fun book so far. I am actually 50% of the way done with this book, but this book takes place in a world where all of the seven families fight over the control of magic. Every 10 years or something like that, they nominate one person from their family to fight to the death, and then there's one final person standing at the end. Whoever that is, their family controls the magic for the foreseeable future. This does fit the villain POV prompt very well, but there is another prompt that I don't really have a book for, and I may end up doubling up on prompts for this book, because the next prompt is Sydney Prescott, and that is a final girl or slasher prompt. I am not reading a final girl or slasher book, but I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna stretch so, so far and use this book for that prompt because there is supposed to be one person standing at the end of this, a final girl, if you will. So um, that is the plan for those two prompts. I will be using this book. And yeah, I'm really liking this so far. The autumnal, gothic, spooky, eerie vibes are 10 out of 10. I am 50% of the way done with this. This will be the first book that I finish and um, I will provide more reading updates on this one when I have them. The next book that I will be reading and the next prompt that I will be fulfilling is the Tara Carpenter prompt, which is female relationships. So that could be sapphic, mother-daughter, sister-sister, etc. So the book that I am going to be using to fulfill that prompt is going to be Caraval. This is a YA fantasy and sisters do play a role in the series as far as I know. This is kind of like a circus book, I believe. 
I know that we have two sisters and one of them finds out that they are being put into an arranged marriage, but they always wanted to go and see this circus. I think one of the sisters ends up sneaking the other sister off to go do that and then craziness ensues. I don't know too much about this book, but I know that there are sisters and I really wanted to read this one. I'm going to be reading Once Upon a Broken Heart later this month and I know that one of the main characters in that book does appear in this book and Hannah messaged me last night and she was like, do you want to buddy read Carval? And that's what we're doing. So I will be using this book for the Tara Carpenter prompt and I'm really, really excited for this one. And the next book that I will be reading is Ace of Spades and this is going to fill the Jill Roberts prompt, which is a YA thriller or a retelling. I am so excited for this. I've heard so many incredible things about this book. It is high time that I pick it up. I've had it for quite a while. I just haven't been in the mood for thrillers, but I did discover with my recent read of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I do like a YA thriller. I do like one every now and then. I think that they're really fun and I've just heard so many wonderful things about this book. This is supposed to be Gossip Girl meets Get Out, which sounds wonderful. So the final prompt for Stabathon is Gale and Dewey, and that is a book with a romantic subplot. I do believe that Caraval has a romantic subplot, so I could use that. Also, All of Us Villains has like a minor romantic subplot, so I could use that, but I do kind of want to read a fourth book this week, so I'm going to see if I can get through these first three books fairly quickly. I might add another book. I am also planning on rereading A Court of Mist and Fury this week, and I could obviously use that for that prompt, so We'll see. Or maybe I'll read something totally different. I have a very big October TBR, so I need to probably get to those books. But that is it. Those are my plans for the week. I'm very excited for all the books that I have to read. And today is a very dark and gloomy day in Seattle. It's like one in the afternoon and it is so dark outside. So I feel like it's the perfect time. I'm gonna light a candle, turn on some autumn ambiance on my TV and sit down and finish All of Us Villains. So I'm going to go read a bit more and I will check in with you guys with some reading updates. Okay, so it is time for our first reading check-in. I actually just finished All of Us Villains. It's just a few hours later. I am going to give this book three stars, which pains me. I hate, I hate giving books three stars. I, three stars is like the worst rating, like low key. Like I just just, oh, this book really, really disappointed me in the latter half, which I feel like is very weird. I feel like if anything, usually the beginning of a book is kind of slow and it's hard to get into. And then the latter half, you're like, yes, this is good or it sucks. This didn't suck, but I so preferred the first half of this book to the second half and the second half was just dragging and I just stopped caring about anything, which is ridiculous because it was literally when they were all like competing in this trial to win the magic. But here's, here's my thing. The beginning of this book and this book as a whole has incredible ambiance vibes. I know I've already said that. That, but there's no better way to describe it. The feeling that this book gives you is, you know, dark, autumn, gothic, just really cool. A really, really cool, very atmospheric vibe that this book has. I loved that. It got me very excited. And when we first met all four of the characters, all four of the POVs, I was looking forward to getting to know all of them. I will say I sort of ended up really only caring about Alistair's POV. The others, they're just kind of there for me. Then once we get to the 50% mark in the book and the competition starts, I just was not feeling invested. I felt like the pacing of the book was weird in the latter half. I felt like the other characters POVs were just not gripping me at all in comparison to Alistair's POV. And I just wasn't invested anymore. And I'm really sad because I thought that this book was going to be at least a four star because the beginning was so, so strong, but this just, lost my attention very quickly. I was listening to the audiobook and I was just like, I, I I, don't even care. I don't even care. I'm just, I'm over it. And I'm really, really sad because this book had a lot of promise. I'm giving it a three star. It's not a bad book and I can understand why somebody would rate it higher than me. This isn't a book that I'm like, I don't get why people like this. Like, no, I can understand why someone would like this book. It just didn't work for me. I won't be continuing on with the series. I think it's a duology. I can sometimes read a three star book and be like, you know what? I'm going to read the next book in the series and see how it goes. I just don't really care. Hate to say it, even though there was a cliffhanger, like I just, I don't know. This, this was kind of not a dud, but kind of a dud, you know? It's not good, it's not bad, it's just, it just is there. So that is kind of unfortunate, but what is not unfortunate is that means I have finished the first prompt for Stabathon, which is the ghost face prompt, villain POV is done. So we're doing good. So now 
I am going to start my next book, which I am going to start Carval by Stephanie Garber. I am buddy reading that with Hannah. She just messaged me that she is already 170 pages in, so I need to get it in gear. I think I'm going to spend the rest of the night. I need to edit my vlog that's coming out this week, and then I want to start Carval, and I really hope that I like that one. She's really enjoying it, so I think I will. So yeah, I will go edit and read, and then I will check in with you guys when I've started Carval and let you know what I think. Hi everyone, so it's time for another reading check-in, so let's just get straight into it. I ended up up starting two new books. The first one being Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is a super popular series. I feel like most people know it, but if you don't, it's a YA fantasy series and it centers around a circus. Our main character Scarlet and her sister end up running away to go to this circus, Caraval, that they've wanted to go to their whole life. And we find out that Scarlet ends up being kind of part of the circus, unbeknownst to her. There ends up being kind of like a competition or a game. I'm still pretty early on into the book. I've met Scarlet and her sister and uh, we kind of got some backstory on them. Scarlet Scarlet is about to be engaged to a man she has never met. Her father has arranged this marriage. Her dad. Oh my god, Scarlet and Tella's dad. Tella is her sister. I... I am praying for a death scene for this man in this trilogy. I hate her dad so, so much. He is actual trash. He is terrible. He is extremely abusive to his daughters and it's just absolutely horrific. So uh, I hope he goes away, but I am enjoying the book other than his uh, presence in the book. But so far, Scarlet has been kidnapped by her sister and taken to Carval because Scarlet did not think that they should go because she was worried of what her dad would think and she's about to get married. But Tella is kind of like, YOLO, we got to do this. So I am at the part where they just got to the aisle where Carval is being held and I'm excited. I'm liking this book so far. It reads extremely quick. I'm really enjoying that. I'm excited to see what the circus is like. I'm excited to meet Legend and just kind of see what happens in this book. But so far, so good. I'm enjoying this. And then I started my reread of A Court of Mist and Fury. Ugh. Can we just, can we just take a second? First of all, absolutely beautiful cover. This is my third time reading this book and I'm telling you, it's as enjoyable, if not more enjoyable, every single time I read this book. I'm having a blast. I'm having so much fun. I am feeling so many emotions. Like this book is just honestly a work of art. It is a masterpiece. If you have not reread this series, 10 out of 10 recommend. It hits so, so wonderfully. Like, I don't know. It's just, oh my god. I'm just, I love this book to pieces and I'm actually annotating for the first time. I've never annotated this book, but I knew I really, really wanted to do that sometime this year. So I'm taking the time now to do so. So it's definitely taking me a little bit longer to get through this book. I am only on page, let's see, I'm on page 126. Still a little bit early on in the book, but honestly, I don't even care. I'm so enjoying going really slow and it's amazing. As I said, I read this book three times. I am reading things that I have no like memory of in the first two reads. I don't know what happened, but there are scenes that happen that I'm annotating that I'm like, I literally don't remember this happening in the first couple times that I read it. So it's amazing, 10 out of 10. I'm just, I'm having such a great time. I am just absolutely in love with this book. It is so much fun to reread and so comforting. I don't know, I'm having a good time. So I am going to continue reading this and reading this over the next day or two. I'll hopefully finish this book pretty quickly. This is obviously gonna take me a while. It might be like into next week when I end up finishing this, but I'm not gonna rush this, but I will hopefully get this done fairly quickly. I don't think it'll take me too long, but those are the reading updates. I will probably end up using both of these for Stabathon. This can be the prompt for the female relationship because we have sisters. And then of course we have a romantic subplot in this book for sure. Kind of not really a subplot, but you know, for, for the sake of fitting the prompt, we'll call it a subplot, but having a great time, loving both of these so much. So I'm now gonna go read just like a tiny bit more and then I'm probably gonna go to bed because I'm super tired, but I will talk to you guys tomorrow with reading updates. besties. So it is the next day and I have very exciting reading updates and I do have a little candle haul. Sorry I'm in the same place. I just, it's kind of late. It's 8 p.m. I didn't want to like do a new setup from yesterday because I just didn't feel like it. So hi, we're here again. But 
Let's talk about reading updates and then I will show you guys my little candle haul. Um, so I did actually just finish Caraval by Stephanie Garber. So I read, I think like 70 pages yesterday and then I read the rest of the book today, which was a lot, but I did end up really, really enjoying this book. I'm going to give this book four stars. I really loved the beginning and then in the middle of the book, it kind of slowed down for me and I was kind of like, ugh, I don't know. Like maybe I'm gonna give this book three stars. I'm not really feeling it, but I would say the last like 25%, I was really, Really, really into it. I really liked the epilogue too. Like I'm excited. It was in a different character's POV, which I don't necessarily know if that means that the next book is going to be in that character's POV, but I just liked how open-ended the ending of this book was. It was exciting. It got me interested and I'm really curious to see what else is going to happen for these characters. So I will definitely continue on with the series. I don't know when. I'm not like rushing out to finish the trilogy, but I will hopefully finish it maybe by the end of the year. Maybe not. I don't know, but definitely in the next few months, I'll read the rest of the books, but this was really, really good. It was really fun. The only thing that I wish it had was a little bit more like whimsical writing and to be fair, I might be comparing it to the only other circus book that I've read, which is The Night Circus, which is the most beautiful, lyrical, whimsical book I think I've ever read. I do wish that this book felt a little more magical. For me, it was just kind of like fine on the magical scale. I don't know if that makes sense, but I did really like it. I liked the characters. I liked the story. I just kind of wish it gave me a little more of that feeling, but it's a four-star read. I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to continuing on with the trilogy. And this does complete the prompt for a female relationship. So that is very exciting for a stabathon. So I'm doing good on the prompts. And then last night I read a little bit more of Akamath. I only read, I think like 40 pages because I am just taking my sweet, sweet time with this book. I am tabbing, I'm writing notes, I'm annotating, I'm highlighting, I'm underlining, I'm doing everything possible. And it's really, really fun, but I just don't want to rush this book. And so last night, I think I read for like over an hour and I only read like 40 pages, which is kind of crazy for me. I think yesterday I was out on page 126 and right now I'm on page 168. So I really did not get that much farther last night, but that's all right. I was just super tired last night and I just think that I don't want to push it, but I will continue to read this book. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm going to a wedding this weekend, so I'm not really going to be able to read much this weekend. So I don't know. I'm going to try to finish this book in this vlog, but if not, you, you guys know. You know how I feel about this book. I could literally talk about this book for hours, but I will not do that to you. So for the rest of the week, tomorrow is Friday and I am going to be picking up this beautiful book, which is Ace of Spades. This is a YA thriller. It's Gossip Girl meets Get Out, which I'm so excited for. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book. So I'm going to try to finish this book tomorrow. I might start it tonight just get like a little bit into it i think though i don't know i'm feeling a little bit burnt out because i did read most of caraval today since i only read like 70 pages yesterday and it's like a 430 page book i read most of that today so i'm kind of feeling burnt out i don't know i think i am going to eat dinner and i'm gonna watch like booktube or the great british baking show while i do that and then i want to take a bath i want to have a full romanticizing my life i got a bath bomb bubble bath candles, the full nine. I want to do that after I eat. And then if I'm feeling up to it, I'm going to start this because I am like, I'm excited for this and I'm excited for a little bit of a kind of palate cleanser in between some of the fantasies that I've been reading. And I've just heard that this is a fantastic book. Okay. So we have, oh my God, a bath and body works haul because I was watching Christina's latest vlog, which I think you guys saw on the B-roll and she bought like a ton of candles. And I was just like, I want candles now. So thank you, Christina. This is your fault. Specifically, she bought fall candles and I don't have any fall candles currently. And I haven't been to Bath and Body Works in I think over a year. So I was well due for a visit. So I went there with a few candles in mind. And I also asked on my Instagram what all of you guys think is the best fall candle from Bath and Body Works. And I feel like everyone kind of had the same answer. It was really, really funny. So I'm gonna show you guys the three candles that I got from Bath and Body Works today. Okay, so the first First one. Okay, so the first one, sweater weather. This is like an iconic fall candle from Bath and Body Works. Oh my god, this smells so, so, so good. Mm, I'm so excited. I absolutely love this one, and so many of you put on my Instagram story you were like sweater weather. Absolutely, no questions asked. So picked up sweater weather, and I'm very excited to burn this. And then. And then I got pumpkin pecan waffles, which is not one that I have ever owned, but I've seen it a lot, obviously, and I've heard a lot of people talk about it. And some of you did say that this was your favorite fall candle. And I was like, why don't I try that out? And oh, uh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Yeah, definitely waffly, pumpkin-y, 
the name is correct. This one's really good. I'm not really like a food candle type of person. I really prefer non-food type scents. I don't know, that's, I, I generally don't like that, but this is really nice and it's just so warm and I feel like for fall you have to have a warm scent. So I'm very excited about that one. And then the, the queen of the hour, like the fall candle, the fall candle, leaves. Leaves is the best candle I think that Bath and Body Works has put out. Ooh, I don't know if I wanna say that. That might be a big statement because Champagne Toast exists, but this is one of the best candles that they have ever made. And in my humble opinion is the best fall candle. It is, oh my God, it's so good. And I kind of panicked when I got there because I was looking around and I did not see this candle anywhere in the store. And I overheard one of the employees talking to a customer and saying, we are sold out of a lot of things right now. And I was like, crap, because I know, I know that the girls love leaves. And so I was just like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to pick this up. It's out of stock. And I looked everywhere in the store and I did not see it. And I was really, really sad because I kind of went there with the full intention of just getting leaves. But then when I didn't see it, I decided to get the other candles as well. So when I was ringing up those other two candles, I was like, you guys are sold out of leaves, right? And she was like, no, we have a full table of them <laughs> up front. And I walk up there and yeah, they were just wrapped like this. And I feel like the name is like kind of hard to see. I'm gonna say that that was the reason why I missed it. But so I'm very excited. I haven't smelled this in a very long time. Wasn't able to smell it in the store, obviously, because it's wrapped up. Oh my God. I'm just like, it's it's fall. This is fall. This is what fall smells like. It's kind of spicy. It's kind of sweet. It's warm, but like still kind of natural. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm obsessed. So that's the third candle that I got and I'm very excited. That is it for updates from me. As I said, I think I'm going to go eat dinner, watch some GBB and then take a bath and I might read a little bit of Ace of Spades tonight if the inspiration strikes, but if not, I'll pick it up tomorrow and I will talk to you guys with my first reading update. Hey everyone, so it is time for my final reading check-in. So over the weekend, I went to a wedding. I think I let you guys know that. And while I was on my way to the wedding and then while I was getting ready for it, I ended up listening to the audiobook for Ace of Spades. So this is filling the YA thriller retelling prompt and this was my final book for it. So Stabathon prompts were completed in the dates of Stabathon, which is fantastic. Fantastic. And I had such a great time listening to this audiobook and experiencing this story. So Ace of Spades, if you don't know, as I said, it's a YA thriller. And basically we follow two students who go to this kind of preparatory private school. And one day the whole student body starts to receive anonymous text messages revealing very personal things about Chiamaka and Devon. And the things that they're revealing are extremely secretive. So they're very confused how this Aces would know all of these things. And also could be very potentially damaging to their futures and also just extremely hurtful on an emotional level. So you're kind of going along with them and trying to figure out who is the one who is spreading this information and how are they doing it. That's all I'm going to say as far as the plot goes, because I think with most thrillers and especially this thriller, I think it's good to know little to nothing going in because I do think that that kind of just makes it more enjoyable as you read. I really, really enjoyed this author's writing style. I was able to connect to Chiamaka and Devon right away, pretty much from the first page. I was hooked. My only criticism I have of this book is I do think that it's a little bit long for a thriller. I think a thriller should be around 300 to 350 pages max. That is what works for me. This is a little bit long. I believe it's over 400 pages. I still really enjoyed it and I did give this book a good rating, but that's really my only critique is I do kind of wish that we could have cut out some of the middle a little bit just to keep the flow of the story going in a way that I would have found it a little bit more enjoyable. But I really, really enjoyed this book. I liked the twists. I liked the turns. I did not expect the plot twist. I had a few ideas, but I was not able to get to what this eventual ending was. And so that's all always going to be a plus for me if I can't figure out what the ending is. And I just, I really enjoyed this book. I'm definitely going to be picking up future YA thrillers from this author. I think that this was an amazing debut novel and I gave this book four stars. I don't know if I said that, but yeah, I gave this book four stars. It was excellent. I really, really enjoyed it. So that is going to be it for my Stabathon slash weekly reading vlog. I had a great time participating in Stabathon. As I said, these prompts were so great because I didn't really have to adjust my TBR too much to participate in this Scream themed readathon, which is one of my favorite movies. So I had a great, great time. I will have all of the co-hosts linked down below. I'm sure that they will have Stabathon vlogs that will probably be more on the theme and probably more horror based. If you've made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave. Is there, there's gotta be like a card emoji, right? Go ahead and leave the card emoji if you've made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know. As always, my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below. You are welcome to follow me on there at any time. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day and I will catch you all in the next one.